Hey, in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching how to work uh, with scripting or also called expressions in the Lemur editor. So the Lemur editor is the computer program um, version of the Lemur app for the iPhone or iPad. And you can be creating interfaces on the Lemur editor and then basically download those onto your phone or iPad. So scripting is a useful tool uh, if you want a controller on the interface to be controlling some other type of uh, controller, such as a fader, or if you want to use objects such as the monitor. So that's what we're going to be starting with today. So we're going to drag a monitor object into our f uh, interface and a fader. And we'll just pretend for now that this fader in Ableton Live is going to be controlling, say, the main volume. So we want the uh, name of this monitor object to be volume. And we want it to be showing the x value because it's the, the, the main value of this fader over here. We want it to sh be showing the x value on a scale from, um, say, 0 to 127. Uh, we'll create a, a MIDI volume fader. So notice how next to here in value, the box is blue compared to the unit precision or font value. Uh, which are white. The fact that it is blue means that you can actually, instead of having a single value in there, you can type in a full expression. So the expression we're going to be doing is fader.x. What this expression means is that it's doing the x value of an object called fader. If you look here on the right side in the project tab, notice that this object is called fader. If I were to rename this object to say volume fader, then I would have to go back to the volume or the monitor object and change the name of this, change this expression so it is now saying volume fader. Notice how the color is changing from red to black, meaning that it accepted the expression. Now the next thing um, I want to show you is by holding the E button, I can then change or play around with the interface. And notice how it is on a scale from 0 to 1. The monitor object is accepting the x value of the fader. And it is playing. Um, it is showing this value from a scale from 0 to 1. So to change this, we're going to add something else to the, our expression. And we'll do times 127. Which means that the top value is going to be 127. And anything underneath that is going to be on a scale from 0 to 127. We will no longer need the precision of three decimal points, so we can just, next to precision, put zero. And here's your main fader. And now the monitor object is showing you what the fader is doing. Another thing you can be doing in uh, when using simple scripting in Lemur is by having a fader such as this control uh, parameters of different objects, such as the friction or speed or attraction uh, with objects such as the multiball. So the multiball object allows, when moving around with it, allows uh, for a change in both x and y axes at the same time. For example, you could tell Ableton that the y axis is the volume for a specific interest instrument, while the x axis controls an auto filter for that same instrument. So you can be playing around with two effects at the same time with one object. As I'm playing around with this, uh, different parameters which can be seen are the attraction, is which is how fast the ball moves towards the mouse position. Uh, the friction is which means uh, as soon as I let go of the ball, uh, how quickly does it stop? And the speed is when it's uh, when it's no longer being held by the mouse, how quickly does it move? So these parameters can all be seen underneath the behavior tab, and notice how they're all in red colors. Also, other parameters such as attack, decay, sustain, release, hold, hold X or hold Y can all also be changed, but we're not going to be focusing on those in this specific tutorial. Instead, what we're going to be doing is we're going to have our fader here control the amount of friction for the multiball object. So in order to do that, we're going to be doing the same expression as our uh, monitor object, and we're going to write it in the friction box. So this is we called the fader volume fader which is no longer exactly valid but that's okay and then we press X press enter um, 
And since the friction is also on a scale from 0 to 1, we're going to, uh, to avoid confusion, we're going to change this monitor object back to a 0 to 1 scale, get rid of the asterisk, and do a preci precision of 2 decimals. And notice how, uh, oh, and we'll also change the name of this to friction. So now the interface makes sense again. One thing which I actually overlooked when explaining the multiple objects is that this object only allows the friction variable variable to actually be uh, seen is when the physics in this object is set to mass spring. So notice the friction is now set to zero. So as I click the ball and let go, the ball will keep moving forever because there's no friction. Now, as I'm moving the slider up, notice how the ball eventually stops. When the slider is all the way up to one, the ball stops as soon as it's let go, basically. So this is a simple way of having scripting actually um, both monitor what's happening to a fader or having a fader affect other parameters of different objects within the lemur editor.